I can tell you, we're in the presence of God. Amen. Amen. If you've ever been some places, you better, yeah, it better be a higher level of imagination. But around here, God's a moving. You sure feel his presence. Can you say amen? If you have your Bible, please turn with us to Ezekiel chapter 47. And verse 1, Ezekiel 47, and verse 1. The Bible says, Afterward he brought me again unto the door of the house. Behold, waters issued out from under the threshold of the house eastward. For the forefront of the house stood toward the east. The waters came down from under the right side of the house at the south side of the altar. Then brought he me out of the way of the gate northward, led me about the way without unto the utter gate, by the way that looketh eastward. Behold, there ran out waters on the right side. And when the man that had the line in his hand went forth eastward, he measured a thousand cubits. And he brought me through the waters. The waters were to the ankles. Again, he measured a thousand. And brought me through the waters. The waters were to the knees. Again, he measured a thousand. And brought me through the waters were to the loins. Afterward he measured a thousand. It was a river that could not pass over, that I could not pass over, for the waters were risen, waters to swim in, a river that could not be passed over. And he said unto me, Son of man, hast thou seen this? Then he brought me and caused me to return to the brink of the river. I want to preach tonight in the series Moving Forward Waters That Cannot Be Passed Over. Waters That Cannot Be Passed Over. Would you help me pray? Father, we love you. We thank you, Lord, for this wonderful opportunity to worship you. Lord, we understand that we were worshiping you before we came into these doors, but Lord, we simply continued in that place of worship. And here tonight, Lord, we ask that you would open our ears to hear the word of God. Father, we do believe that we are living in the last days. And I pray, oh God, that you would help us to have ears to hear. In the name of Jesus, we love you. We give you all the glory. And God's people shouted, Amen. You may be seated. Preaching waters that cannot be passed over. We understand that when it comes to rivers... Origination point, beginnings, source, even headwaters are vitally important. The reason that they are important is that they convey content, makeup, and creation. I don't know if anybody in this room drinks a lot of bottled water, but I can tell you I can taste a different that Ozarka water and all other waters. Can you say amen? You see, the source of a river or it's, the source of a river can tell much about what will be in that river. We find in the book of Genesis that four rivers have their headwaters or source in the Garden of Eden. Genesis 2.10 says, And a river went out of Eden to water the garden, and from thence it was parted and became into four heads. The name of the first is Pison, that is it which compasseth the whole land of Hivala, where there is gold. And the gold of that land is good. The Bedalim and the onyx stone, and the name of the second river is Gahan. The same is it that compasseth the whole land of Ethiopia. The name of the third river is Hedekel. That is it which goeth toward the east of Assyria. And the fourth river is Euphrates. Now the word Eden here means paradise, delight, finery, or luxury. In other words, these rivers had their origination point, their beginnings, their source, and their headwaters in the paradise of God. We could say that they began in the Lord Jesus Christ. If a person in any of those lands that we have mentioned here 
would have traced the river, following it through their land all the way back to its starting point, they would have found the Garden of Eden. This reality is vital to every experience, experience of the river for the individual. We understand that with many books, many ministers, and in many churches, there is river experiences. However, the headwaters or the source of those experiences tell if they are originated in God or not. Can you say amen? In other words, you and I can have an experience. We could say, boy, that was a river. But if we cannot trace that river back to the person of the Lord Jesus Christ, then it doesn't matter how wet it feels. It is not God. Can you say amen? You see, if a person traces that river experience all the way back to its origination point, will they find that it begins with man, with tradition, with religion, or with fleshly and carnal height? Or will they find that the river that they are experiencing leads back to the Lord Jesus Himself? Genesis 1.1 says, In the beginning, God. John 1.1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. John 1.33 says, And I knew Him not, but He that sent me to baptize with water, the same said unto me, Upon whom thou shalt see, the Spirit descending and remaining on Him, the same is he which baptizeth with the Holy Ghost. Amen. These verses convey to us that the river of the Spirit, Spirit flows out of the Lord Jesus Christ. This tells us that every doctrine, every experience, every belief, and every opinion, if eternally true, flows out of Jesus. Can you say amen? It doesn't matter. How many goosebumps you get. How many people attend its meetings. Or how many social media likes it gets. If it can't be traced back to Jesus, then it is not the river of life. Can you say amen? This brings us tonight to our text. In our text we find that the headwaters or source of Ezekiel's river began in the temple of God. It did not begin in some Jewish restaurant. It did not begin in some religious leader's home. And it did not begin on the streets of Jerusalem. It began in God's temple, which is Jesus. John 2.19 says, Jesus answered and said unto them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. It says afterward, he brought me again under the door of the house, and behold, waters issued out from the threshold of the house eastward. Jimmy Swaggart said, the door of the house speaks of the sanctuary from which the waters will flow. Need I remind you that Jesus said, I am the door. Can you say amen? You say, Pastor, why are you laboring on this reality? Because I've come to learn in these last days that there's a lot of river experiences out there, but if you trace it back to its source, you find it is not in the Word of God. I've heard people tell me all the time, Preacher, Preacher, what about this? What about that? And I've said this from this pulpit many times, whatever I say, I look to the Word of God to find Find my backing. We find in the book of Matthew that whenever Matthew was trying to confirm the deity of Jesus, he began to trace him all the way back through time, trying to show you and I that Jesus, his source, is founded in God. Amen. In the beginning was the Word. You and I can trust that reality. And if this river that we are experiencing is of God, we will find it in the book of Genesis. We will find that its source is the door. It comes from the temple. It doesn't come from, come on somebody. It doesn't.
doesn't come from man. It doesn't come from opinion. It doesn't come from ideal. But it is founded in the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the source. He is the beginning. He is the headwaters. And if it is real, it begins and ends in Christ. Hallelujah. One able commentary said, significantly, the river does not come from a king's palace or government building. It doesn't come from a marketplace, a place of business, or an athletic arena. It comes from God's house. The pulpit commentary said, the stream issues from the temple where God visits the earth and has his typical dwelling. It is he who sends forth the life-giving flood. We have the gospel of the grace of God from him. And him alone comes our salvation. Amen. Now as we look at this text in a deeper way, there are three things that I would like to convey. The first is spiritual depth demands progression. We find that the whole of our text conveys that depth was in relation to Ezekiel's progression. Scripture lets us know that Ezekiel started off in drops, but ended up in torrents of water. This great contrast was simply the result of divine progression. You see, I have found over the years that many would testify of a desire to know God more, and to experience God more, we sing songs like we sang tonight. I want to know you. I want to seek your face. And to be more like Jesus, all I ask is to be more like Him. Can you say amen? amen. However, I've also found that most simply want to experience this death, this greatness, and this power at the door. Many do not want to progress in God. They want to experience God more right where they stand. Amen. They stand at the door. Are they saved? Yes. Are they on their way to heaven? Absolutely. But how many of you know that death is in relation to progression? Amen. You, you and I, we cannot just get in the door and say, Lord, I want to know you more and never budge from that location. Amen. If you and I as a church want to know the depths of God, we've got to grow the land. We've got to progress in the things of God. It's good to be in the house. It's good to have the drops of the Spirit, but if we're ever going to experience the torrents of the Holy Ghost, we've got to move on with God. We've got to say, Lord, I understand that your desire for my life is to move forward, to go on, to go deeper. Can you say amen? You see, most don't want to walk with God, move with God, or progress with God. They simply want to stand at the door and let the Lord bring the torrents to the door right where they stand. They simply want to swim at the door without any spiritual progression. However, the Spirit of God does not work that way. Can you say amen? He demands forwardness and progression. If we are ever going to know the realities of Christ in a deeper way, if we as individuals and as a church are going to experience deeper, then we must continuously move forward in the things of God. We've got to say, Lord, I know that there's more for my life. I know, Lord, that there's more for my family. Amen. I don't know about you, but I realize we've not experienced all of what God has. But if we're ever going to do that, we have to move forward past the door in the following the Lord Jesus Christ. The pulpit commentary said, The small stream becomes a mighty river. He giveth more grace. The blessings of Christ increase with time. The more we know of Him and the longer we follow Him, the more of His grace follows us. We must come to see that in this forwardness and progression, there cannot be a simply viewing of the river. There must be an active participation with the river. 
I want you to hear me. We understand that there are those who like viewing things. They like viewing the ocean. They like viewing the swimming pool. And they like viewing the rivers of the world. But they do not like getting in. They say things like it's too cold. It's too dangerous. Or it's too altering. I may get wet. I'm just going to sit and watch what goes on with the river. This disposition may be sufficient in natural life, but it will never ever be sufficient in spiritual life. In this life of the Spirit, there must be active participation in the waters of the river. Ezekiel came to learn this. It says, He brought me through the waters. The waters were to the ankles. And then it says, He brought me through. The waters were to the loins. Amen. In other words, Ezekiel come to realize that the river is not something to be viewed as something that is beautiful, as something that is glorious, as something that is good to look at. No, no. Ezekiel understood that if he's going to see more of the river, he's got to experience the river right where he is. Amen. You and I, as the people of God, it's very easy to sit on a back pew and say look how the spirit is moving in the front amen look how the spirit is moving on sister Lucretia brother Thomas or whatever else and say boy doesn't this look beautiful Come on now. We're very good at being Pentecostal viewers. Amen. We sit back on our chair and we say, man, this is a great show. Look how wonderful this is. But the Spirit of God was never intended to be viewed from a balcony of spiritual religion. No, no. The Spirit of God is not that which is to be viewed as something glorious and something beautiful, but something that is to be experienced and know that that God is powerful. You can, you can, you know, you can drive over. Today I did it. Drove over the Arkansas River. You can look at that and say, boy, boy, isn't that beautiful? But you don't know the power of that river until you get on the inside of it. There's currents there. There's a power there. That's my God. That simple observation will not convey to none of us. Amen. It's something to be experienced. Another able commentary states, Ezekiel went into and through the waters. The river was not something for Ezekiel to simply look at or think about. It was something for him to enter into a man. It was dependent on how he saw more of the river, how he responded to the trickle of the river. Amen. Think about it. Here he is. In the trickle, there's nothing of any type of dynamic moving. Come on, somebody. Ezekiel there at the door, there was nothing at that point that ever said to him, it's going to be a lot greater down the road. But bound up in obedience to the one that measured all of it, there was a desire to see more, no matter how that more played out in life. Amen. He didn't know there was no scripture there. Had said, listen, when you obey the thousand, he'll give you another thousand. You obey those, he'll give you some more. There was no word to back up that reality. There was simply something that said Lord I am not satisfied with just a drop I'm going to move with that and I can tell you when we do that Pottsville Assembly of God there's so much more for you so much more for this family but we your family but we've got to understand it's how we respond to the drop that depends the torrents of water yeah. amen you see in other words Simple observation had to give way to active participation. We find Christ highlighting this reality in the book of Luke. Luke 7, 32 says, They are like unto children sitting in the marketplace and calling one to another and saying, We have piped unto you and you have not danced. We have mourned to you and you have not wept. Now hear what Jesus is saying is that there was two ministries 
that were presented to the people of Israel. There was the ministry of Jesus, but there was also the ministry of John. And I believe we would all agree that both of them were baptized in the Holy Ghost. Matter of fact, let me... Explain it with the word. Bible lets us know that when Jesus' mother saw John's pregnant mama, John was filled with the Holy Ghost. So we know Jesus was filled with the Spirit of God. So we understand that both of these ministries were top of the river and a top of the ministries of God. But though that was the reality of life, these rivers, these ministries were presented to Israel and instead of experiencing those ministries and coming away with the divine reality that is God they sat there every Sunday every Sunday every Sunday and they simply piped and they simply proclaimed and they never entered in amen and if you're here and you and I never enter into what God's doing we will never be touched by what God's doing it'll never mean nothing to us we could have the ministry of John the Baptist we could have the ministry of Jesus himself and we will simply sit there and say they never ever touched my soul come on now you see they wanted to sit on their pew on their chair and on their backside and simply observe the ministries of Christ and John how many of you know that doesn't work I said that doesn't work I've seen many people try to do it Somehow I'm going to sit there and never come to the altar. I'm never going to raise my hand. I'm never going to participate. Listen, you're here for one purpose, to participate. Can you say amen? amen? Everybody in this room, you should be here to participate or what goes on here isn't going to move you at all. You see, they did not want to participate in those ministries. They simply wanted to observe them from a faraway vantage point. However, the kingdom of God is not known in balcony views. It is known in active participation. Come on now. How many of you know there's some things in participation in the water. It's going to mess you up. Your hair's going to get wet. Come on now. I said there's a lot of things that's going to take place when you are actively involved with the river. You see, we find in Ezekiel that forwardness was bound up in the divine actions of the man. I want you to see this. We find that the phrase brought me is used six times. We also find that the phrase he measured is used four times. This tells us that progression and forward movement was all at the discretion of the man. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we could just move forward when we wanted to? Wouldn't it be good? If Ezekiel could have simply said, I'm going to move beyond the measurements of the man, and I'm going to have my own measurements. Come on, somebody. It's very easy for us to say, Lord, we have the desire to move beyond the current measurement, but how many of you know the Lord knows what you're ready for? He knows. Have you conquered the measure that you're currently in? Have you been in that place and you've said, Lord, here I am. I'm ready for more. I'm ready for more responsibility. I'm ready for the water to get to higher and higher upon my person and in this church. But the Lord may say back to us, Pottsville, you're not near as ready as you think you are. But if you'll be obedient to the measurement of what I've already given you and you move forward in that you can rest assured that the Lord is going to measure more for you you're never going to be bound up he knows what you need as individuals and as a church he will never fail but his measurements are always appropriate his measurements are always good he'll never outmeasure what you and I can function in but his measure is always to where you and I can move forward but never get ahead of what we can handle in spiritual life listen the Lord will never ever put more on you than you can handle isn't that right you see the Lord knew what measure Ezekiel could handle in the moment that's all he gave you see as the man measured and moved Ezekiel moved with the man he waited for the measurements to get bigger aren't you glad he does that for us I mean, know the Lord, you know, when I used to play sports, I used to say it's good to measure up your opponent. Isn't that right? 
Isn't it good when the Lord measures us up and knows what measure to take us into? One able commentary says, the implication in these passages is that the man with the line in his hand be followed as that, it was, it, as that is what he intended for Ezekiel to do. In other words, you never one time find the man looking back to Ezekiel and saying, follow me. But it was simply the natural progression of what the man was doing. It's good when the Lord says, follow me. But I can tell you it doesn't take a rock of science to know he wants you to do that. I said it doesn't take any type of great spiritual revelation or reality to know, listen, the Lord is moving. We need to move with the Lord. In other words, divine progression is not bound up in the individual but in God. The Lord knows what we're ready for. I'm a firm believer in that. I say, Lord, every day, Lord, you know what I'm ready for. You know what this church is ready for. Don't take us into a place that we're not ready to swim yet. Come on now. We need no John Wayne's throwing children here. Come on, somebody. You see, maybe it was that Ezekiel needed to learn how to swim before God put him in swimming environments. Come on now. Maybe Ezekiel was only ready. I know with my boys, I know, listen, Levi, he's more of an ankle guy. Come on now. Luke, he can handle the loins. But I can tell you one day they're going to be put in places where it's torrents of water. It's water that they don't need a life jacket. They don't need one of them things they got to slip on. Come on, somebody. They don't need none of that. They can move out there where they can swim in the waters. Maybe Ezekiel was trying. God was trying to lead Ezekiel into such realities. Is Ezekiel, you need to start off with your ankles. You need to then move into a place where it's your loins. But I'm going to keep taking you, Ezekiel, to a place where you can swim in this thing. It's a glorious place for you. It's a glorious place for Pottsville, Assembly of God. But Pottsville, we've got to learn how to handle ankle water. We need to learn how to handle when it's waist deep but if we'll keep trusting the Lord there's going to come a day ahead where we're swimming around this thing the glory of God is so rich and so pure and so abundant that we're out here saying my Lord I never knew this could be as deep as it is but if you'll keep following the Lord and following the man with the measure it's going to be good it's going to be glorious can you say man give him praise in his house you see, a person may desire to move forward. However, their move, movement must always coincide with the movements of God. Amen. That's good to know because it takes a certain burden and responsibility off us. If the Lord just says, move when I move. How I many know when the children of Israel were in the wilderness, they had no responsibility to know the way. I said, they, someone asked me the other day, they said, Pastor, would you pray for me that I have direction? And I said to them, direction is bound up in Christ. Right. You know, oftentimes we get so beside, oh, I need direction, I need direction. No, you need to stay in Christ. He is the way. He's not about the way. He don't speak of the way. He don't tell the way. He is. Somebody say he is. He is the way. You say, preacher, how am I going to fulfill all God wants for me and my family? Stay in Christ. Wake up every day of your life and say, Lord, I'm in you. You are the way. The disciples, they ask him, where are you going? He said, you know the way. He never had a road map to heaven. It wasn't the one said, you go 100 miles this way, take a ride at Jupiter. Come on, somebody. I said, everything was bound up in the Lord Jesus Christ. What he was saying to them is, you just follow me. You stay in me. You'll wake up. Listen, I know if we'll stay in the Holy Ghost, keep following Christ, every one of these chairs will be filled with the person that Jesus wants in those chairs. I don't have to make it happen. I don't have to manipulate things. I simply have to stay in Christ. I can tell you the Lord will guide every step. Come on, somebody. I said, you don't have to stress about it. You don't have to worry about it just stay in Jesus and one day you'll wake up in that sweet by and by where the Lamb of God is the light listen Christ is the way glory glory you see Ezekiel could not span 2,000 cubits at a time but only 1,000 
One able commentary states the river was as deep as Ezekiel's ankles. It wasn't very deep. But Ezekiel was in it as much as he could be. He was in it as much as he could. I can assure us that our desire is proved by action. Listen, how many of you know if that's all, the, if that's all you need, that's what you're going to eat? Come on. That's all he could experience. That's all that was being offered to him. And he seized every single part of what was being offered. He didn't just put one big toe in there. Come on. That's what we do. The water is for the ankles, Brother Bill, and we put one toe. And we say, oh, to be more like Jesus. Come on, somebody. I said, that's what we do oftentimes. The Lord gives us environments of ankle deep water and we put one big toe then we're saying we want more of Jesus. No, no. If he gives us ankle deep water I'm jumping in ankle deep water. Amen. Whatever that river is allowing us on a Wednesday night or a Sunday morning or a Sunday night we're going to utilize every drop of it. I mean if I've got to get down and lay down in it whatever. Come on somebody. I can tell you God is looking for a people that will take up all that he offers and if you'll be faithful to that he'll give you more water and more water until it overflows and God is having his way give him praise you see the Lord is looking for such people listen if you won't sing with what you got don't expect to sing with more if you won't preach with what you got don't expect to preach with more if you don't give with what you got don't expect to be given more But God blesses those that are faithful to what he gives them. You know, it's very easy for us to look over and say, boy, I wish I had that rivers of water. Oh, you never do that. Look over and say, boy, look how well they're swimming in it. I sure wish I could swim in things like that. I wish I had that much abundance of water. God says, I gave you, you'd drown. You wouldn't make it. Come on, somebody. You wouldn't make it in those environments. But God says you can make it here. And if you'll be faithful to here. I know some people. Some of you saved in the past five years. How many of you saved in the past ten years? How many of you would testify that God has given you more water? Given you more water. I can assure us tonight as we're faithful as a church with what we got. God will give us more. I said God will give us more. But if we do not utilize what we have. I can tell you, you'll stay in ankle deep the rest of your life. Amen. And you say, boy, I wish I knew what they knew. Isn't that right, brother? I wish I knew what they knew. I wish I could experience the Lord like they do. I wish I could know God. I wish I could be used of God. Listen, if you're not being used of God in ankle deep water, never expect to be used in torrents of river water. Amen. Can you say amen? amen? But God requires that all of us be active participants in what he's doing. Yeah. Listen, don't just sit back. And say, boy, that, that sure looks good. Boy, that is beautiful. I tell you, I'm sort of like that with the ocean. I really don't like the salt. <laughs> Somebody say amen. But I do like looking at it. But when it comes to the things of God, I can assure us, it's bound up in active participation. Because, you know, it, you know if Ezekiel wouldn't have gotten the water, you know what he probably said, Brother Robbie? That water looks ugly. <laughs> oh, you never met them people. Sister Donna, I've met them. Boy, they need to do that different. That man measured all wrong. How many of you met them before? But I can tell you, when you're out there in the water, you, you have no complaints. Why? Because you're actively participating in what God's doing. Amen. But if you sit there and you say, well, I'm just going to enjoy this as some type of beautiful scenery, I can tell you, I'd rather you not be in the church than to do that. You say, why? Because you'll be hardened to the movings of God. Come on now. And you know what it would take to get, get you ever in the water? Jesus said it this way. He said, you make them, you proselyte them, but you make them twofold more a child of hell. But he's saying, if you've exposed them to something, they never got in themselves. And it's twice as hard to get them out of that. Can you say amen? You say, I'd rather somebody be on a bar stool than live in the church and be carnal and worldly. Come on now. Brother Jason, as you come. You see, here tonight, we need to grab a hold of very firmly 
we must actively participate in the movings of God. But also that those movings of God must have their origination point and their source, their headwaters, their beginnings in God. Come on. You and I should be able to trace every doctrine back to this book. I heard somebody say the other day, it got me fired up. It was after I preached that message, so it wasn't, I did, it wasn't one of them reactions towards it. But they said, they said this, they said, you know, doctrine don't even matter. Let me remind you that Jesus is doctrine. Matter of fact, it says the doctrine of Christ. And Paul said they want to endure sound doctrine. Everything that you believe should trace back to this book. Every moving. You know, people ask me, my dear sister Gail over here asked me the other day about gold dust and all this. And I said, listen, 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 listen. Somebody said, listen. <laughs> it's got to be in this book. I get caught up nothing. It's not in this book. If I can't find it right here, you say, well, pastor, is it God? Nope. Amen. No. If it's not in this book, folks, I can tell you I'm not believing it. I'm not, I'm not participating in it. I don't care how well they sing, how well they dance, how well they jump. Is it sourced out of that garden? You know, anybody that would have lived however that worked in those days, if there were people that could trace back those rivers, they would have found the Garden of Eden. Because that's where all of it flowed out of. It could be in China, all the way across the world, say, I'm going to follow this. I'm wondering where this goes. You see, that's what we, the way we must be with everything. Ezekiel could trace the river back to the temple. Under the door, Jesus is the door. It all flowed from him. How many of you know Jesus said when the Holy Ghost comes, he will magnify, exalt, reveal me. That's the Holy Ghost desire. If, if people are part of a Holy Ghost that doesn't lift up Jesus, then they're saying the Holy Ghost is a rebel. Isn't that right? If, if people are not led back to Christ with what they feel, well, who is Christ? Somebody say the Bible. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. If your Holy Ghost doesn't make you hunger more for this book, it's not the Holy Ghost of the Bible. Can you say amen? Well, Pastor, you preach like that Bible's absolute. You bet it is. Uncorruptible. It is the word of God. Heaven and earth will pass away, but this word will never pass away. Judge all things, Paul said. By what? The word. I said the word. Somehow we've been led to believe that you can trace waters back to different places. And as long as it feels splashy and watery, that it's, it's a Christ river. But I can tell you Every river of Christ flows back to him. John said he's the baptizer of the Holy Ghost. Jesus is. Aren't you thankful for the Lord? So here tonight we must understand in closing, would you stand? That if it is the river of God, if it is the ministry of the Spirit, it will lead us back to Christ. But also we must be active participants in the movings of the Spirit. Spiritual depth demands spiritual progression. Do you think... Do you think that Ezekiel could have ever thought of the greatness of the river down the road? Do you think he could have imagined? The, I mean, it's a great river by the end of it. I don't believe he could have. I believe as he went, he thought, oh, man, this is wonderful. You know, the Bible says this. I read this the other day. How many know the Bible says I was, John was in the Spirit on the Lord's day? Isn't that right? And who did he see? He saw Jesus. The Bible says that, you know, you know the first several chapters. Hey, he walked them in the candlesticks. But then it says this. It says he was called up higher, and then it says he was in the Spirit. Again. What are you saying? I've not studied all that out the way that I, before I'd preach something to know for. But I can't tell you, it's very possible. What God was saying is there's a greater river. I've showed you an echo here, but listen, John, there's more to this. Because you know where he saw Jesus the second time? What are you saying? I'm saying you can be filled with the Spirit and be caught up in a lot of carnal. You know, church stuff is churchy. And if John would have been left in churchy stuff, he might have been discouraged. But I'm thankful he just kept on following the Spirit. Got deeper in this thing. Then he saw there is one that's over all that. That churchy stuff's going to melt. Jesus is going to be glorified. There's a city above all of it. 
But folks, I encourage you tonight, keep going with the river. Keep experiencing the river. Here at this church, let us be faithful to what God has given us. He'll give us more. But if we won't use what he's given us now, he'll never give us more. Can you say amen? Father, we love you and we give you glory. We lift up your name. We thank you, Lord, that you are among us. We thank you, Lord, that the invitation to follow the man, to follow you, is always there. I pray, oh God, that we would, Lord, always understand it's the word of God that is supreme. I pray, Lord, that we would be established in our heart that if it is you, it comes out of Christ. I pray, oh Lord, that you'd help us, Lord, be obedient and experience actively every level of which we are. We give you the glory. These altars are open from around this building. Can you come and you simply say to the Lord, Lord, lead me deeper. And I do want to experience all that you have for me now. I don't want to be an observer. I don't want to sit on a good spiritual balcony and look out and just simply enjoy what God's doing. I want to participate in that moving of the Spirit.
continue to read here in Ezekiel 47 you find that whatever that river touched it lived whatever the Holy Ghost if it's the real Holy Ghost he brings life can you say amen whatever he touches he puts a smile on your face a life in your heart because he's the real Holy Ghost amen amen isn't God good amen praise the Lord stand with us tonight oh hallelujah there is a river there is a river. Hallelujah. Waters that cannot be passed over. That's what I'm looking for in this church. Can you say amen? Father, we love you. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to gather here. I thank you, Lord, for a people. God, that understands that the true rivers of God begins at the door. Begins at Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for a people, Lord, that, that want more of you. It's not simply a proclamation, Lord. It is told by the way that they live. 
They are taking advantage of every bit of the Spirit in their lives. I pray, oh God, we as a church would give ourselves to following the man that has the measure. Lord, you know what we can handle. You know what we need. But Lord, most importantly, you know where you're leading us. Father, let us trust you in all things. You shall not fail. We give you all the glory. God's people shouted, Amen. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you Sunday morning.